Josiah, what were some of the questions you have for Mayor Bronson? Well, I guess one of the things that I'm wondering most about is what have been some of the biggest challenges in your mayoral administration so far? Um, well, certainly like any uh, political executive, governor, president, whatever, you, there's always challenges, I think, with the legislative branch. But that's the natural conflict designed into the system. So I'm not going to uh, um, belabor that too much. I, I think it's a little extreme here now. Again, we mentioned in the first segment that I've got um, I've got some real challenges in the area of executive authority with the assembly. They're they're taking they're they're often taking authority, executive authority, away from me legislatively. Uh, I think we're going to see a correction in that. Um, the Department of Law is making some decisions in that regard, and then we'll get a lot of that cleared up. We do want um, the legislature to have a voice in setting policy. That's what they're there for, and I'm not begrudging them that, but the, in the pure administration of government, they're not supposed to be doing much of that. So we'll get that. that that's, that's a big challenge. Uh, you know, early on, it took a while to build a team. There was, you know, maybe some people I wouldn't have that if I had to do it over, I wouldn't hire again, um, obviously. But as in any new administration, corporately, militarily, or or certainly in politics, there there's some there's some change that needs to go on. We went through, but we're finally at a team right now. I think that I would put up against any team of any administration, governor or uh, mayor in this in this state. Uh, I've got uh, municipal uh, manager Kent Cole Hayes. I've got one of my key directors is Lance Wilbur. I've got uh, Paul Van Landingham, uh, probably 27, 28 years of snow plowing experience. He's directing that. Um, I've got Sharon Lechner and OMB. I've got um, Alden Thurn as CFO. Uh, if you add up the time of service in, in public service of, of those kinds of people that we have now all over the administration, um, uh, this is a highly competent, highly professional administration, and and uh, I'm actually very pleased. I know there's this notion out there, and I love the signs, um, Bronson's incompetent or incompetence has a price or something like that. And from this, what's called the 907 group, um, all right, uh, where is the incompetence? Because you're, you're measured as executive mostly by how you accomplish your goals with the team that you have, and you have to build the team. I built the team. It took a while. It did. We had some real challenges, and the political pressure from the outside was, quite frankly, overwhelming at times. We we had, and we did make mistakes. I did, uh, you know, but that's long past. Uh, that's a that's more than a year ago. So we're moving forward. Um, and I'm, I'm quite pleased with the folks that we have on board right now, but we're still facing the political challenges from, from the assembly. Um, I think they need to stay in their lane a little bit more. Um, they, they propose things that I, I think are, are not productive or sometimes foolish. Um, we try to explain to them calmly that, that you probably don't want to be doing that and, and they do it. Um, their spending, their budgeting is quite quite different than mine. I I haven't, my budget in the mayor's office has actually sh shrunk a, a little bit since I came into office. And I'll just say one of my opponents, major opponents came into office on the assembly in 2017. And the, the assembly's budget at that time was $3.7 million. And today it's 8.9. Wow. So yeah, wow is probably the word I'd use. And um if, if that's what you want for the city, then that, that's a good person to vote for. Uh, that person, well, they went from 26 to 37 employees in that same time frame. Uh, and so we have a very clear choice in this election. Um, there's four people primarily in the race. Um, there's only one conservative. That's me. Um, I'm, I'm not a hair on fire radical uh, conservative. We don't really deal with social issues. Uh, there, that's, but I am a fiscal conservative. I propose budgets under the tax cap. That's how property taxes go down. That's the only way property taxes go down. It has little to do with your with your assessed value. It has to do with spending. And until spending goes down, your property taxes will keep going up. And and I I'm in this 
envelope where I'm trying to function, trying to run a government, especially in the areas of public safety and other import, very important things, where where money is, we do everything by money. And, you know, we've we've got roughly a $600 million budget. And, uh, but it's all falls, much of it falls on the taxpayer. And the assembly is quite focused on finding new ways to create new spending and to find ways around our tax cap. And we've got great people in this city, old folks or not older folks that are like Larry Baker, who's a great citizen, uh, who came up with in, with others in this notion of a, of a tax cap. And it's a rather complex calculation, but that tax cap controls spending statutorily. And that's a good thing. Yeah. But the just, assembly is looking for ways to get around that. Josiah, what was uh, another question you had for Mayor Bronson? Something that I think would be good to circle back to is you mentioned, that, you know, you've learned more now that you've been mayor for three coming on four years. What's something you would do different in your second administration than you did in your first administration? Um, two coming on three years. Um, so it'll be three years, July 1st. Um, I think, you know, I made a decision a couple of years ago uh, in the spring of a couple of years ago. Uh, we were, I think my administration, you know, we were fighting too much with the assembly. Uh, I made a conscious decision um, in in April of of uh, of 22 to just calm things down. Um, you know, just when you're on the dais, you just uh, of say of a Tuesday night of assembly meeting or anywhere, you just calm it down. I, I found some great intermediaries to work with the assembly uh, to kind of communicate back channel because I I would excite them to, uh, I think, bad decisions. For example, here last year, I had an assembly person go to my chief of staff and say, you know, Adam, I I really support Holton Hills. I've always supported Holton Hills. But tomorrow when we vote on the land transfer, which was a critical, which moved that project forward, I'm going to vote no because I'm not going to give this mayor a win on anything. That's the kind of world we live in. And it's not good for the city. And so I've found ways to work. I brought on Mia Costello, former state senator, absolutely brilliant. She um, she's very uh, diplomatic and she's found ways to help. I'm trying to find ways to work with the assembly. That doesn't mean I'm going to give them everything they want, um, certainly, because we have disagreements. We probably disagree on, on 30 percent of the stuff that we which means we agree on 70 percent of the stuff. Let's keep that in mind. And um, we, uh, I think we're functioning a lot better working with the assembly, especially in the areas of, of housing and uh, for, for the homeless. So that, that's, that's a good thing. We've made progress and I'm, I'm proud of that. That's really good. What's one thing you want Anchorage to hear you say? Uh, I think the focus has got to be we, whether we're on one side of the political divide or the other, we've, we certainly have to work together. Um, we control the executive side. So how we execute things is, is our business. Um, you know, that, that may be up for debate over on the assembly side of things, but, um, they fund things, they appropriate. And, and we, we simply have to, we do have to work together without compromising our, our principle. But, um, again, we have to have balanced government. The worst thing that can happen right now I, I think in any city, you you don't want one party rule. And if either of my three opponents win, it will be one party rule in this city. And if you want to see what that looks like, look at, Port, again, Portland, Seattle, L.A., San Francisco, that's just the West Coast. Um, and this is how it happens. It, it seems to me these radical and leftists come in and take over the assemblies. They get majorities, then they get the mayor's seat. And then it's it's kind of over. And and I'll I'll be honest with you, I don't want I don't want government run by hardcore conservatives completely either. And you know, I would like about a two thirds, one third mix there because uh, it's good for us. And I'll be I'll be political here. It's good for us to keep hearing the radicalness of the left. You want them to have a voice because you you want to see what they're thinking, and you want them in public places saying what they're thinking because that's the warning hmm. you you don't want them silenced because then things stew in silence and and then it, it also it stimulates these public debates that we have to have on 
on, on things like homelessness or economic development or funding or uh, budgeting and taxes and, and all that stuff. So you don't want single party governance from from the far right either, but you definitely want a center right balance in government. Uh, that I think that's the best form of government we have. We don't want to silence one side or the other.